There are a lot of people that have questioned that, though. Uh, is God behind this? You know, the people who say, you know, God didn't do things like this. That's the devil. Uh, so, well, I don't think God makes people sick, but you know, He's the uh, He's sovereign. It, he allows it. I mean, He's like yeah. He's not He's not punishing us. Yeah, is what I'm trying to say. Well, somebody asked me, he said, do you think God is the author of uh, of this? It's like, well, he may not be the author, but he's the editor. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You know, I mean, God never calls evil good. Right. But he takes evil and uses it for good all, all the time. time. Right. All That's the what time. he does. And, and so uh, you can't ever get to like, well, God does this and the devil does this and you know, it gets back to that old deal of the two dogs fighting in us and right, whichever right, right. one I feed. That's terrible theology and it, it, it won't work in life. So, you're exactly right. God is, uh, if he's taking something away, that's an act of love. Yeah. It, even if when God convicts you of sin, you know, I, it took me a while to get a hold of this, but, you know, when God convicts you of sin, sin that you didn't know was there, and all of a sudden he just pulls it back, and you go, oh my oh God, my God. Yeah. what have I done? Who am I? You know, you, you, it's like, oh no, this is awful. So, what all God's saying is, I've, I've already paid for that. I'd have to get rid of that. Why would you want to walk around with that right. shame and guilt and stuff in your life? Well, it's not, a, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. But it's good. And if we can't ever get a hold of it, it's like, yeah, convict me more, mm -hmm. as much as I can stand. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing here. Is God is, God's exposing things in our lives. And it's like, that's good. That's real good. Yeah. You know, because we, you know, Second Corinthians five, like he, God made a decision like a long time ago that he was not going to count our sins against us. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's yeah, that's already been decided. Right. And man, that's hard in times like these, isn't it? Like it yeah. really gets down to, you know, like it, I mean, a lot of ways it comes down to good theology. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, of course, Charles Schultz, who creator of the Peanuts, yeah. you know, which was, I mean, he was, uh, I didn't know him personally, obviously, but uh, everything I read, he was a good Christian guy and had, had a lot of great values, morals, and all that stuff. But I remember one of his cartoons was, uh, I think, uh, who's the one that played the piano? Linus. Lines played the piano, um, I think. Or Schroeder. Maybe it was Schroeder. Anyway, one of them. Uh, but Lucy was, was all worried, you know, because she had heard somewhere that, you know, what if it had been raining a lot and what if the world floods and what if God's man and, you know, and the whole world's going to flood again like it did for Noah. You know, and they said, well, Schroeder played the piano, says, well, uh, that's not going to happen because he told us in his word. You know, he set the rainbow and found that he'd never do that again. Mm -hmm. And she went, oh, well, all of a sudden I feel really better. And he said, yeah, good theology has a way of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and it does, doesn't it? Like yeah. to, to come back to, you know, to good theology in that whatever, okay, so here, here's a question I've gotten from people and I'm still holding her before the Lord. What is God saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there, there's no doubt that God is speaking, that he is saying something, that he has plans, that he's up to something. But one of the things I've been trying to solidify in people like, okay, yeah, that, that's, that's nothing wrong with saying what is God saying. Mm -hmm. However, what he has already said is sufficient mm -hmm. to deal with any fears, any yes. concerns, anything that we ever have, what he's already said in his word. And so it isn't a wonderful opportunity for us to rediscover yeah, you know what he's said in the word. Chris, as a as a, I guess you're a millennial, aren't you? Even though you won't claim by, it. But yeah, by definition. By definition. Not by upbringing, probably. So <laughs> one one of the things that I've noticed is, uh, uh, it seems to me. Of course, this, I've not done. You know, my my research is limited here, but uh, just in my experience over the last uh, week or so of dealing with this, um, so one of the things I've noticed is that the. The, the age group that is most at risk seem to be the least bothered uh, by this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they're not wringing their hands and worrying and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, the, the calls I'm getting and the things that I'm fielding come more from your age. Can you sure. speak to what's going on in the, in the thoughts and the hearts of, of folks your age? 
Well, I think just in general, younger generations probably always have cared more about preservation of life and uh, we, we think that we have more to live for and uh, we, we tend to believe that there's more at risk and at stake than maybe there really is. And so I think there's just a, a wisdom that older generations have just by virtue of having lived through so many different forms of hysteria and wars and all kinds of things culturally. They just see things differently than, than we see them. And then for my generation specifically, we have faced so little adversity in life uh, that that anything that would make us uncomfortable is reason to panic and fear and yeah. and run away from. And so uh, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. The question I have for myself and for others like me, and I know we've talked for years now, I've, su- I've sat under y'all's teachings on this uh, about naming things properly. Um, and. And we've said that if we misname things, it inevitably we'll mismanage them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so assuming that there are underlying fears, um, predispositions, things like that, that God would be exposing during a season like this, how, how do we name them properly? Like what, what process or what techniques do we use to name properly what's going on in our hearts so that we can repent or manage those things correctly or change our perspective. Uh, I I just feel like things that we are naming uh, as loving intention or proper precaution might actually be rooted in things like fear, Mm -hmm. but it's so subtle that it's really hard to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one of the things, and and I'll I'll, I'll take a little stab at that, you know, one of the things is that we we you know we've created kind of in you know in the West American Christianity, in particular, this uh, unrealistic expectation of some sort of super Christian, where weakness is not allowed and we're you know all of that you know anything like that is just is not allowed. I mean you got to confess you know your your way out of that or it's just not tolerated. Like you know we want to succeed succeed and have victory and and be strong and be people of faith and you know it's a one, one of the things that this one of the scriptures that are, that has really been tumbling around in me over the last week or so it comes out of proverbs 3 where where it says that this is old king james which is like it was bringing deep stuff out now <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> really exposing stuff quote king james <laughs> anyway but it, but it is it's really well worded there when he says be not afraid of sudden fear that's amazing. I love, I love that. Mm-hmm. Be not afraid of sudden fear, which tells us number one that it's totally unre- unrealistic for a Christian to expect that he can conquer all fear. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Even though this, you know, the scripture over and over and over. I think somebody's been quoting it 365 times. You know, in the Bible it says, "Do not fear," uh, and. And, and I, I honestly, personally, I've never counted those, so I take that, that may just be a good preaching tool yeah. or something, like I've never counted it, but, you know, but if it says it once, it's kind of enough to tell us <laughs> not to fear. Uh, and so, do, do not fear. That doesn't mean don't ever have fear in your life. That that comes as a comfort for when fear rises yeah, up. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Right? right? Yeah, and so, so when, so it's, 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 it's totally... You know, fear is going to come. Sudden fear is going to come. That's usually the way it gets here. Like, yeah. Like before you can think about it, it comes. And yet that scripture, uh, e- even that one alone tells us that, hey, yeah, don't, don't be afraid of that because it can be dealt with. It can be named correctly and then dealt with. Uh, one of the things we've talked about for years is like you're talking about a, a process of dealing with that. First of all, I would say it's like everything else in the kingdom. You can't deal with it alone. You, you, you're not supposed to, you know, the, your, the need for community, the need for other people in your life <clears throat> is not a deficiency. It's a design from God. Um, and so, so you know, one of the, one of the most incredible community, we, again, we've talked about this for a long time too, but talk, think about this community, the, the Spirit of God living inside of us, the Scripture in front of us, mm-hmm. and the saints around us. 
That's the community where we make all of our decisions, where we should make all of our decisions, right. that we should take all of our fears and all of our concerns and all of that too to find answers. Yeah.